we are with my next door neighbor, Dale, and Dale has a uh, oxygen sensor issue. So Dale, maybe you can give a brief summary of what you've got here and uh, what type of car it is and also what you've done so far as far as taking it into the shop and all that. It's a 2003 Honda Accord um, four-cylinder. <clears throat> Had a, a check engine light on, took it into the dealership, and the code was an 0135 saying the primary oxygen sensor was bad. Um, said no voltage coming. As typical, I like to show the report from the technician, but we don't want to put the name of the dealership on and everything like that, but it called up. 0135, the technician's note stated that he tested for voltage from the oxygen sensor. There was no voltage from the oxygen sensor. It's reading 0, 0.00. Therefore, recommends replacing the oxygen sensor. Hopefully, most of you guys who are regulars on the channel would immediately spot the fallacy in that diagnosis where it is possible since 0135 is a heater circuit code, it could be there isn't 12 volts for the heater circuit getting to the O2 sensor, O2 sensor heater not heating up, therefore the dead oxygen sensor that was not ruled out in the technician's report. So a couple ways we can test this and this is gonna be very quick and easy. So the first strategy, uh, what we wanna do is see, is there 12 volts getting to the heater circuit in the oxygen sensor? That's what we're gonna start off with. The second test we're gonna do is the most definitive, and that is we're gonna look for continuity in the heater sensor for the O2 sensor, in the heater circuit for the O2 sensor, I should say. If there is not continuity in that heater, the heater is open, and of course, the O2 sensor would need to be replaced. So we're gonna do both tests in this video. So, uh, Dale, let's find the uh, S1O2 sensor and get it unplugged. All right. Got it? All right, cool. Which one do you want? Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test the car harness side. Okay. Okay, and then right, the second right, thing. That's right there. Okay, so let's see if we can get this in camera view. All right, Dale. So Dale, what you want to do is you want to identify the wires on there. You may have to peel back the insulation or something, but what we're looking for, uh, and guys, I think I've mentioned this before, we're not going to do a wiring diagram on this because every car I've ever worked on, ever, the heater wires are the two wires that are the same color, whether they're white, whether they're gray, whether they're black. So we're going to look for four wires on this and two of the wires should be the same color. Dale, let's see if you can... Is there two orange ones? Okay, so there's two that are the same color. Okay, so don't need a wiring diagram for this. Obviously, probably best to check one, but uh, based on my experience, those two orange ones are gonna be the heater circuit. So um, Dale, on most cars, we just need to turn the card on, not even start it, and we should get 12 volts there. So one of those is going to be the power feed, the other one's going to be a ground, and that feeds the 12 volts through the heater circuit in the O2 sensor. Okay, so we're on 12 volt scale, DC, and Dale's having a little struggle there because the, uh, the harness is uh, kind of set a little bit deep in the engine, and uh, he's going to probe the two light-colored wires, and we're going to... Check our voltage. Okay, so we're only reading a half a volt. So, uh, can you do this? Um, I'm still pretty convinced that we should be seeing 12 volts on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one lead and we're gonna put it to a known ground. Because the variables are we may have faulty ground here, we may have lack of 12 volt signal, uh, or we could be on the wrong wires or the car needs to run. I think the easiest one will be to run the car actually. Let me check that everything's clear from your belts here, and uh, maybe we need the car to run to have the 12 volts. All right, obviously starting the car here is gonna introduce a uh, open O2 sensor code as well. That's all right, we'll clear it. Let's try uh, probing those two bottom ones again, and this time seeing if we get 12 volts. 0.45 volts still. Okay, not liking that. So yeah, so let's try some other ones. There's zero volts there. Zero volts there. Zero volts there. 
zero volts. So the only thing we're getting is 0.45. That's probably not good. So let's do this now. Again, the, the variables could be that we're having a trouble on the feed or on the ground. So let's take one of our leads. I'm going to put it to a uh, battery ground. All right. Dale, go ahead and test either of those orange wires right now. We can see we get two volts now on one. Two volts on the other. So uh, not liking that. Go ahead and try the other ones. The other wires. Nope. And no. So we have... Uh, we have confirmed an issue here. Now, what we also need to do is test the sensor. My bet, Dale, is that that oxygen sensor is going to be fine. I bet. So let's turn off the car so it's a little bit safer. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to readjust my meter to continuity scale. Okay, if we detect continuity on the heater circuit of the sensor, then once again, bad call from the technician. Replacing the O2 sensor would not fix this because the heater in the O2 sensor is working. It's just not getting the voltage. So, uh, Dale, we're going to need the pigtail from that O2 sensor. My arms are kind of long. I bet I can reach it. Oh, it fell down. Yes, it did. There it is right there. Does that make it easier for you to reach? Yeah, if you hold that, what do you want? Everybody always yells at me when they don't see the wires actually getting poked, so we're going to go ahead and do that here. Okay, so here we are on the harness uh, for the O2 sensor. So this is the O2 sensor pigtail. If we look very closely here, the back two wires here are the same color, so he's going to probe these back two. And uh, we're also checking to make sure he's making contact with the terminals. Okay. Oh, there is continuity. Go ahead and do that again. Okay, so there it is, continuity. Okay, that's all we need to see. So there you have it. Okay, Dale, um, you know, I know you know a little bit about electrical and everything. So based on the tests that we did, what would your determination be on what the deal is with this car? Yeah, we're not, we're not getting the 12 volts to the sensor. And what would you say about replacing the oxygen sensor in this car? Probably doesn't need it. Yeah, it, it absolutely probably doesn't. We still don't know for sure because while we know the heater circuit in the O2 sensor is intact, that we know, which was what the code is, we don't necessarily know that when we get this all connected that the O2 sensor still doesn't read the stoichiometry, right? We, we still don't know that. But as far as the O2 sensor needing to be replaced because of the code, we know that that's not the case. Hey, Sharon. <laughs> Oh, do you need to take care of that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Dale's wife is actually uh, quite severely diabetic, so he has to go do a little medical thing there. So we're going to let him go because we're pretty much done here. But once again, bad call from professional technician in that not all the tests were done. We are not getting voltage to the oxygen sensor to heat it. If we did, we know that the heater in the O2 sensor is intact. Replacing this oxygen sensor would not fix this problem. We know that. So very interesting. Now the elephant in the room, what's the deal that we're not seeing the voltage? So the next test we're going to have to do is at the PCM to see that we're getting the voltage from the PCM and if maybe it's being lost somewhere along the line or if the PCM itself is faulty. So we're going to have to do that in another video. That will, of course, be on the pay channel. So we'll see you guys over there. Uh, Dale, you're back. Come on over. I was just summarizing uh, the situation. So Dale, you're absolutely correct. Replacing the oxygen sensor is not going to fix this. Absolutely not. There's no voltage to it. So uh, I've got to travel for business, but what I'd like to do is uh, work with you to determine where the failure is with the 12-volt signal. So uh, would you be available maybe next weekend or so? Yes, sir. All right. We'll do that. Thanks, Dale. I appreciate you being a good sport and filming it. So uh, all right, guys. We'll be back with this thing on the pay channel. Um, have a good one, and I hope, uh, hope you found this helpful. And actually, guys, we're going to hang on just for a second here. Dale, Dale's first question, of course, was, is there a fuse for this thing? And the answer is yes, there, there is going to be one. So just hang tight. We're going we're gonna to rule this out. I know that a fuse is, is not likely to be the issue here with that, but we're just going to rule it out because it's the right thing to do. So why don't we do this? Let me look up a wiring diagram. I don't 
a fuel in so if that were the case, your car wouldn't run if it was a fuel <laughs> injection. Yeah, so, so I know it's not that. This may be on it, though. The other thing is you've got another fuse block inside the car yep. as well. Why don't I pull up a wiring diagram while you look and whoever finds it first, okay? Okay, guys, quick update. So I did go and check a wiring diagram. And for those of you guys on the paid channel, I will show you exactly how I did that to determine uh, that, A, we, we did check the right wires. So the wiring diagram did confirm the suspicion that the light colored wires are correct. So it did do that. Um, but also in looking at the wire diagram, we need to look at a couple fuses. So we want to look at fuse number 23 which should be a 7.5 amp, and uh, fuse number seven, which would be a 15 amp. So um, hopefully, yeah, if we can grab the book there. So uh, again, I'll show you guys how I found the wiring diagram and how I interpreted it on the follow-up video. I know we've been working on that quite a bit on the pay channel. So uh, we will do a wiring diagram inspection, and also we need to uh, of course, also follow it up to the PCM because we're definitely going to have to do some PCM testing now. Dale just had knee replacement surgery, by the way, so it, it's awful gentlemanly of me to uh, assist <laughs> like this, isn't it? <laughs> this is part of your therapy. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing my nice jeans, so I don't want to kneel on the ground. <laughs> Is it underneath? Oh, there it is. Not easy to get no, you know what? Maybe I should do that for you. Ah, all right, 23. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull this fuse. I'll be right back. I think we're still set on continuity on the meter. All right, Dale doing it right. He knows to use the, the meter. Yep, all right, well that fuse is not the problem. All right, let me pop that back in the car and Dale, why don't you pull out number, um, what was it, number uh, seven up here, right? Which should be a 15 amp. Oh my God, I suck. It, it's not number seven, it's number four. <laughs> all right, so it's number four. It's this one right here. Right here, it even says it's for the heater circuit. Okay, so it's on the interior. It's number four. It's, it's four up from the top. Okay, let me go get the right fuse this time. Golly. That, that's this one out here. No, it's interior. Well, that's under hood, interior. Um, okay, number four? Mm -hmm. Number four, it okay, says I'll, uh, I'll uh, heater. Uh, heater. Okay. Okay, let me get this little gizmo. Let's pull that. Number four. Why did I say number seven? I must have had seven and a half amps stuck on my mind. Somehow, it's something's wrong here. Uh -oh. The 10 amp and the 15 amp have been switched. So I'm gonna pull both of these out. There's a 10 amp for a lighting circuit and a 15 amp and they're in the wrong places. All right, that was weird. Okay, so. What, what happened, let me show you. I'm not quite sure what the deal was there, but obviously somebody was in here before us. So on the interior fuse block right here, what my wiring diagram showed is that number four is a um, 15 amp, and it also shows right here for the air fuel heater, 15 amp. And then the one adjacent to it, number three, is daylight running at 10 amp and those fuses number three and four in the block were switched not a big deal if neither of them is blown they're both good they're both good okay well somebody was in there for some reason before but i'm going to go ahead and put them in the correct places but uh still confirms we don't have a fuse problem man you never know what you're going to find do you okay guys so uh we've got everything plugged back in we got the fuses in the right locations obviously a little bit suspicious there. It does look like somebody was working on that circuit at some previous point. Don't know if it was the technician or not. You weren't in there, were you? Well, of course not. Yeah, why would you? Um, okay, well, we got some figuring out to do on the next video. So that will wrap it up. Thanks, guys. Hope you found this helpful. We'll see you next time.